dry shampoo is not cleaning your hair in the traditional sense. My name is Dr. Erin Melissa. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I've been in practice for over 20 years. I've watched this skincare explosion occur, and I know that my patients need lots of guidance when they're going through these aisles to understand what's out there. So subscribe now, follow along, and let's talk about dry shampoo today. What is in dry shampoos? You know, dry shampoos, again, are not cleaning your hair. There's no water involved here. You're not putting something in so that it can grab onto oil and other residues and wash it out of your hair. You're really just spritzing it on and then it sits there. Because it sits there, its only real job is to soak up any oil or residues that it comes into contact with, usually either by using a cornstarch or alcohol base just to help add a freshness factor to your hair. So if you don't want to wash your hair too frequently, you want to skip some days, it might give you a few days off from washing your hair just by making it not seem as oily or greasy when you don't wash your hair. I think of dry shampoo in theory is almost identical to like baby powders or other types of products you'll put under your arms or under your breasts just to soak up moisture. That is their only role. They're not there to clean, they're only there to absorb moisture. A true shampoo is one that actually has ingredients in it such as surfactants that are designed to attach to oil and other dirt and debris on your, on your hair and pull it out of your hair when you do come along with water afterwards to gently remove it. So this is not how dry shampoos are acting. They're really just being spritzed on to absorb moisture, but there is a bit of a residue that starts to build up from dry shampoos that will need to be washed away as well. Using a dry shampoo is not necessarily bad for your hair, but understanding that you're not getting a clean out of it is essential. Only because you're using dry shampoos to kind of skip a few washes, your lifestyle is so busy and you just don't have the time to put into that, then yes, this is a great way to skip a few washes and still get that freshness factor to your hair. But remember, actually, dry shampoos are leaving a bit more of a residue behind because the product is there, it's absorbing moisture with the cornstarch or alcohol that sits there, but it stays on your scalp and on your hair. That does need to be rinsed away at some point. You can't substitute this for the shampooing process. If you use dry shampoos really, really frequently, you might want to consider using a clarifying shampoo once or twice a month just to take away that buildup of that residue on your hair and scalp that the dry shampoo could be leaving behind. There was a recent report from a company that tests products post-market when they're on the shelves to see if there was benzene and dry shampoos. This is coming up with a lot of spray-on products and other products as a result of the manufacturing process. So dry shampoo does not have benzene listed as an ingredient. What's happening here is during the manufacturing process, and it's difficult to say when this occurs, but benzene is being produced somehow and it's being trapped in these products. There is a company that's been very effective at testing these products for consumer safety purposes, and dry shampoo did come up as one of those items that was being flagged for benzene being present. So if you're not sure about the product that you're using, please check back on my blog and there's a link to this company's website that has the products that were tested that did show positive studies for benzene so that you can choose the right one for you. Dry shampoo definitely gives us some wiggle room to avoid having to wash your hair as frequently. Sometimes there's a lot of time, money, and effort that goes into some hairstyles or some hair care practices, whether it be blowouts or hairstyles or other things people are getting. And washing your hair too frequently can sometimes devitalize its look. It might just not look as fresh and as vibrant as it did before. Using a dry shampoo may not be a bad way to gain a little bit of vitality to your hair in between washes, but just knowing that it is no substitute to a true shampoo. You definitely still need to shampoo at some point and you need to recognize when to based on any buildup that's occurring on your scalp from using these products. Now I have darker hair and for me to find a dry shampoo I've had a lot of challenges because I find that a lot of times when I try to use a dry shampoo you know you're supposed to kind of part your hair and spritz it down to parts and you can kind of part it in different areas and kind of rub it in. They often leave a white residue on my hair and I know a lot of people have this challenge as well. It's sometimes a matter of trial and error because these products are aerosolized most often you spritz them on 
There is a bit of a learning curve with these products because you basically part your hair, then you spritz the product down the part, massage it in and maybe part it again on either side and do the same. And that way you can evenly distribute the product through your scalp and hair. It's really such a, a learning process more than anything else. It's not that there's one product that's better than another. There might be some that people have a user preference for. I just find that if you learn how to really master its use, you can really gain the benefits out of it so that you can choose a product and also understand how far away from your scalp to start spraying it on because many of these are aerosolized products. And once they spray out their product, it almost feels like there's a layer on your hair.